Hi, I'm Roger with Roger Outdoors uh, uh, channel. Uh, I've driven Washington State uh, roads and back roads uh, for well over 50 years and, and over that time really acquired uh, a lot of kind of favorite scenic places that uh, I enjoy. Uh, and today I'd like to kind of share uh, one of my trips, uh, driving trips that I recommend that you take. Uh, and this time I'm going to explore kind of the southwest part of Washington State uh, and just kind of give you what I think are the highlights, some of the things that you might want to stop and, and uh, take a look at on your way down through that part of the state and just make a you know long day's uh, driving trip out of it. Uh, you know, if you like really taking your time, make it a couple days. Take along a camera, <coughs> pack yourself a picnic lunch, have a good time while you're out there. So the first thing I do, I you know head south on I-5 and I get down uh, oh, near Federal Way and you'll see Wild Waves Theme Park. That's kind of one of the, uh, during the summer it's just really rocking with kids uh, using the water slides and uh, during the winter they have a really a pretty upscale uh, Christmas light display that uh, you might want to pay attention to. The next thing I come to is the city of Tacoma. Now this is really you know, years ago we used to, you know, they had the Asarco uh, smelter down there and you could tell you were getting near Tacoma five or ten miles away. I mean, that, that was kind of a smelly place to be and, and Tacoma has just really transformed itself in terms of it's a place now that I take visitors from out of state and say, hey, look at this. This is what I consider something uh, really worthwhile and interesting to see. and. I'll get off and I'll, you know, go by past the Tacoma Dome and, and some of the uh, <coughs> the sculpture along their, their waterfront. He'll come to where Chihuly has, a, uh, you know, some of his glass artwork over the top of the, uh, uh, the highway that you're driving on. Uh, and you kind of notice that, Jesus, you know, everything around here, you've got a glass museum, the University of Washington built a branch campus, they've got, uh, you know, visitor centers, they've got convention centers. Uh, I mean, the place is just, all of a sudden, it's brand new down there. And, and people really want to own a condominium, live down there, uh, especially in this waterfront area, just, uh, uh, and then if you go past the downtown section, then you start, getting into where Tacoma has developed this, this, you know, walk along Commencement Bay uh, that's, you know, is just heavily used by the, the people, just, you know, walking, jogging, rollerblading, uh, uh, just really taking advantage of this big park area along the water, their waterfront there. Uh, I go down there sometimes and I'll fish off from Les Davis Pier, pier uh, you know, sometimes I'll uh, try squid fishing there or salmon fishing. E either is uh, uh, a reasonable place to fish there as you're heading towards, uh, you know, Point Defiance. Keep on going right along the waterfront, enjoy the, you know, quality restaurants that you're seeing, and then all of a sudden you'll come to where uh, a Sarko plant used to be, and that, that area has just blossomed into a retail center and just high-rise condominiums. Uh, you know, they've got a farmer's market, uh, movie theaters, uh, everything brand new, just really first class, uh, underground wiring, uh, you know, the whole ball of wax. And just a few, another mile further, you come to, uh, you know, the uh, zoo and, uh, you know, drive around Point Defiance uh, Park uh, in the, in that area, and again, just you know, they've they've remodeled the uh, uh, Point Defiance Park and some of the exhibits they've got there. Just you know, this is really a place that I take my visitors. You know, and I recommend you do it also. Anyway, I finish that tour, get back on the freeway, head south. Uh, you know, go just a little. Uh, you know, near Olympia, you'll come to the uh, Nisqually River. Uh, I kind of look at that and say, wow, you know, this is one of the few success stories where the uh, Nisqually tribe took and restored the habitat for salmon at the mouth of the Nisqually River. Just, you know, and 
and they finally brought back uh, you know salmon numbers to that river that they used to have in the old days. One of the few rivers where uh, you know modifying the habitat has really worked. I'll continue on south. I'll go to Olympia, uh, you know, and just past Olympia, I'll come to Highway 12, which heads out to the ocean beaches. And I'll take that, and I'll we'll head over to Aberdeen, and when I get to Aberdeen, there's a little cutoff that you he head south uh, towards Westport. And uh, you know, I'll take that uh, cut off. Uh, I think I'm on 101 at that point. And you'll drive by Ocean Spray can Cranberry uh, Plant, uh, you know, and as a reminder that uh, Washington State is the biggest cranberry grower in, in the country. Um, and Ocean Spray is kind of the biggest producer and that's their main plant to do it in. So it's uh, an interesting place to do. Uh, anyway, I'll continue on south heading towards the Oh, there's a lot of razor clam beaches uh, down in that area. So I'm heading down towards Westport. Uh, uh, and if you haven't ever tried razor clamming, give it a try. I mean, just that is really, you know, minimal equipment, uh, you know, a little shovel that you dig these things out of. They're just really unbelievably tasty. And when you go there, I mean, this is, this is what you do if you're in Washington. You know, you drive out on the beach you know, just a regu your regular car that you're driving to work with every day, drive it out on the beach, and you'll see literally hundreds of cars, thousands of people lining the beach for miles. As far as you can see, they're flying kites, they're fishing, and they're digging razor clamps. And, you know, just, it's really, you know, you when the tide is right, you have to look up the seasons, get a license, that sort of thing. But, you know, when, when they say it's a good time to dig, go out there and get yourself a bunch and really enjoy the day, uh, uh, you know, just having fun out there on, on the beach and watching them fly these kites. Uh, later on in the year, just south of where you're digging the, the, uh, uh, the razor clams at Long Beach, they have a, a, a kite festival in August. They can really take your camera for that. They're just fabulous. Uh, uh, you know, kites that you just won't believe that they could get something that large and that intricate off the ground and they're just really worthwhile taking a look at. Uh, when you turn around and you start heading north, uh, you've got a chance to pull off at Raymond uh, on 101 uh, and kind of they've got uh, a lot of metal sculpture along that they line their roadways with that, uh, you know, are good artists that but, I mean, lots of these things that uh, you're worth photographing a lot of these things. Uh, and then you keep heading north towards uh, the Olympic National Forest. Um, you know, and this area is, uh, it's, it's a rainforest. Uh, you know, there's just fabulous uh, rivers in there that uh, river guides uh, fish like the hole and the bogashiel and the uh, you know, for both salmon and, and uh, uh, rainbow or steelhead, uh, and, uh, and just great fishery there. Uh, keep going north, uh, you'll come to, uh, you're almost to Neo Bay, and you'll see a little sign that says Tatouche Point, uh, and you can kind of take, get off on that trail and start walking uh, along the trail. It'll take you to the north, the uh, most northwesterly part of the lower 48 states. There's kind of a marker out there uh, at the end of the trail. Uh, you know, continue on to Nia Bay, uh, see what the, uh, uh, you know, the Native American, uh, uh, the tribal uh, shop there has all kinds of, uh, um, Oh, history of their, uh, how they relocated there and a lot of neat artwork, uh, etc. Then you uh, start heading east now, uh, you know, heading back towards the, the loop to take you home, back towards uh, Port Angeles. Uh, you'll uh, pass like the Quinault Lodge, which is an interesting place to stay. Uh, they uh, are one of the few lodges that kind of brag about the place that it's, it's haunted, you know. <laughs> They have uh, a couple of uh, famous ghosts that they claim uh, patrol the place from time to time. It's a Native American uh, uh, motel. 
um, and a nice lake as well. Uh, you'll get to, uh, as you get near uh, Port Angeles, you'll notice uh, uh, the uh, visitor center, signs to the visitor center at the Olympic National Park, uh, you know, uh, you know, for the, for the Olympic National Park. Uh, take and head up that way. They've got a nice, nice display. They used to have a lot of uh, mountain goats up there, <coughs> but the mountain goats didn't interact well with the uh, the people. They'd uh, kind of butt them, uh, you know, looking after the trying to get salt from people that uh, were kind of using the the path, the trails as their rest rest stops. Uh, anyway, they they got you know relocated all the animals out of there, but uh, and they've got a little history of, of that. Uh, and if you want, you can take at Port Angeles. There's a, uh, you know, it's a good fishing spot. You know, they've got uh, charter boats, etc. But and also there's a ferry boat that will uh, take you up to uh, Vancouver Island. And uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, right now, of course, it's with COVID, it's, you can't take it. But uh, when that opens up, that's a nice uh, alternative to going across the border. Uh, by uh, Bellingham and, and uh, going across the Tawasson Ferry. Um, if you continue heading uh, just kind of a little west of uh, uh, Port Angeles, you'll come to Squim, which is, you know, as close as Squim is to the rainforest, the, you know, that gets just all kinds of, you know, several feet of rain a year. Uh, Squim is one of the driest places in uh, in western Washington, it you know the 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 mountains kind of block the uh, the clouds and uh, you know just cause it uh, you know they have less rainfall than uh, uh, than Seattle as an example. Continue on uh, you know on the way back and you'll uh, come to where you can take a cutoff. I think it's Highway 20 uh, to uh, go to Port Townsend. Uh, and Port Townsend has a once a year they've got a great jazz festival you might want to take a look at. Uh, they've got a uh, uh, a concert in a barn uh, where they have classical music in a barn where you're sitting on hay bales, etc. We've been to it several times. It's very good. I mean, these are first rate uh, musicians that uh, uh, have played in famous bands uh, uh, or orchestras rather uh, on the East Coast. Um, and Port Townsend also, you can take a ferry up to Whidbey Island if you uh, uh, choose to, to go that direction. If not, uh, you know, we get back on and head towards the uh, Hood Canal Bridge. Uh, just before you get there, you have an opportunity to spend some of your nickels over at the uh, uh, Clearwater Casino if you're feeling lucky and want to pay for your trip, etc. But other than that, uh, uh, you know, go across the bridge and uh, then you have the opportunity of either driving uh, all around um, down to Tacoma and cutting a, across the uh, Point Defiance Bridge. Uh, you have to pay a toll, I think it's like $5.50 if you go that way. Or you can take a ferry boat um, out of Bainbridge and, uh, and going that direction you don't have to pay for extra passengers uh, going uh, going back, etc. So we often do that because uh, I just enjoy taking a ferry at the end of it, especially at the end of a driving trip. It's just you kind of kick back and relax, kind of think about what you saw, kind of look at some of the pictures you took, etc. And it's just it's just fun. It's just a, a way of kicking back, and and so you uh, aren't real real tired by the time you get home. So anyway, I hope you uh, take me up on taking that trip. Uh, you should be able to do. Uh, that trip in in a long day's drive. Uh, pack yourself a picnic lunch. Uh, again, take your camera. Have a good time out there. If you happen to see me on the you know taking the one of the hikes or something like that, don't forget to wave.